This week, we had so many stories. This happens sometimes. We've talked about it before. This was a lot even for that. Wow. Y'all wonderful people send them in. And Catherine, who's in the channel, she, she finds them and sends them to me as well. There was upwards of... Do we need to film, like, a bonus episode when we're no, done here? No, I, I, I winnowed it down, and some might even spill in the next week, because, you know. But it's, like, over, like, approaching 30 stories this week of just weird... Nice. Oh. What? Wow. Yes, wow. This, this, and and that, that was counting the stuff that Catherine found me and the stuff that y'all found me. And that, that, that's all like 30 total because a bunch of you will send me the same stuff because you, you see the same story. So you send it. That's fine. But. You're going to laugh at me. Hmm. Mercury retrograde ended last week. Now, I know I didn't believe in that either until I started working in the beauty industry. And if you work in the beauty industry, for some reason, Mercury retrograde is a fun yeah. thing. People go insane. It's thing. I would agree about insanity being involved. Yes. I'm just saying, if you work in the beauty industry, like I never believed in it either. And now I'm just like, oh, sh Mercury retrograde. Well, we're all screwed for the next two weeks. It's a hot rock going around in a circle. It don't mean sh a lot. I, like I said, I didn't believe in it either. But I'm telling you. I didn't believe the full moon made people crazy until I worked retail. That's a thing. Full moon customers are on a whole other level. Well, regardless, we have a lot, a lot. Yeah, I'm going to get my emotional support Quasimodo. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong? Um, let's just start with, <sighs> it's Florida. That makes that. Yeah, that that's this. Let's just go there. Let's just, here we go. Welcome to another advent uh, edition of watch your damn kids. 10 year old driving. With 11 year old sister pulled over four hours away from Florida home. I know. I know, right? I, I the, 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 where do you find out why? Where you, 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 oh my God. A 10 year old and 11 year old were stopped while driving alone four hours from their California home. In a, for their, sorry, from their Florida home in an attempt to run away to California. California. There's some reference humor for you. Okay. At around 3.50 a.m. Thursday, deputies uh, spotted a white sedan that had been reported stolen driving on I-75. With the car reported stolen, police conducted what they initially thought was a, quote, high-risk traffic stop, but were surprised to find a 10-year-old boy, the driver, who exited the car, followed by his 11-year-old sister. Officers learned the children had been reporting missing and the stolen vehicle belonged to their mother. According to their mother, the girl was upset over having her electronics taken away. Hi, Valkyrie. Just came in talking her little face off at me. But do these kids not have a bedtime? They left the ha they had to leave the house at like midnight or something. <laughs> yeah, the missing around eleven twenty five p.m. Did they do the Ferris PM. Bueller trick where they like? <laughs> did they like do the thing where they piled up a bunch of pillows under their covers? <sighs> did we have a story like this years? 
Yes, this keeps happening. We've had a ton of stories like, oh, why are you scratching me? This is from three days ago. This keeps happening. We've had a ton of these stories. You got to keep the car keys on the fucking ceiling with kids these days, man. You got to keep them in a safe. Mom. Why does a 10 year old know how to drive? <laughs> fucking GTA, man. I don't fucking know. get it if you live on a fucking farm. Because kids learn how to drive earlier on farms because they got to run a quit. Even, Why does your 10 year old in Florida know how to drive? Even the cops are like, apparently they did a pretty good job of driving. They made it all the way from North Port. And we're actually getting back on the interstate south when the FP noticed the stolen car. They did it. They managed 200 going on and off the highway. 200 miles. They when managed to 21. I was afraid of getting on the highway. I was old enough to drink. I was afraid of getting on the highway. I want to know what their plan was. Because you can't just drive straight to California. Yeah. It, there's. And like, that's not one tank of gas either. No. <laughs> what were you going to do and go? Yeah, my dad wants you to get wants some gas. He's in the car. <laughs> Don't No, It's fine. It's no, fine. He's he's he's. he's Sleep. He's sleeping in the back seat. Don't look. <laughs> we need a hotel room for my dad. <laughs> His kid fucking came up. She took you gotta watch the kids. You take their phone, they fucking flip out. This is why I have cats, man. <laughs> Little humans are fucking stressful. Speaking of hotels. I, I would, this is not what I would expect a response to be to this particular situation, but people took it regardless. So, uh, folks showed up at a, uh, La Quinta Inn. And, uh, just, I, I say that because it's a, it's a Mike Birbigula thing. Don't, don't at me. Um, they showed up at a La Quinta Inn, and there's nobody there. There's nobody to check them in. There's nobody behind the desk. There's nobody there. So they did the only logical thing. Run? No, they did. They ran the hotel themselves. I know, right? You've never seen a fucking zombie movie. Three friends said they went into manager mode last week after arriving at a La Quinta Inn in Nashville, only to find the front desk was left unattended. In a series of TikTok videos hosted by 27-year-old Aaron Howard, the friends chronicled their adventure, which began once they saw no one was were actively working the front desk. So they started working the reception area themselves. We are told Insider they began answering phone calls assisting angry customers, calling shuttles, and even serving breakfast once people began filing in at 6 a.m. A video about their experiences went viral with over 900,000 views and 120,000 likes. Commenters joke the friends deserve free stage for the hotel as well as hotel concierge to be added to their resumes. Statement Insider, representative for La Quinta's parent company, confirmed the front desk had been unstaffed that night. Following conversations with the hotel management team, locations independently owned and operated franchise, it's our understanding this incident occurred due to a staff member, member prematurely leaving an overnight shift in the early hours and not notifying management. Representative added that once management was notified, they sent a new employee. The employee who left their shift is no longer in the company. On the one hand, you got to admire the hustle. Because they yeah. saw what they saw this, they're like, we've got an opportunity here. Break out your phone. But how did they like it said they started serving breakfast? Like they're Yeah. Did they just have access to stuff? Apparently. Me. Apparently. Like, why were you let into the kitchen? Wasn't there someone in the kitchen who was like, Do you fucking belong here? Yeah, before the employee arrived, like, the what the fuck is security like at the La Quinta Inn? 
terrible. Well, let's stay in there. The friends spent a few hours putting their new hotel management skills to work. They looked around to make sure the employee hadn't fallen asleep somewhere and even called the manager, who they said had no idea that the front desk, uh, there was no front desk employee left. They spoke with the maid who told them no one had been there for hours. I noticed the article doesn't say that they checked for chewed on human remains. No, they didn't. You come upon some place that's supposed to have people and it fucking doesn't. And your brain doesn't go, oh, God, it's the zombie apocalypse. I don't really trust you. If you just assume that something benign, I don't understand you as a person because I'm going right to. Oh, shit, the aliens have landed. The zombies are rising. I'm getting the fuck out of this creepy shit. Well, they were at least compensated. Uh, they were given like comped rooms and shit. They were also given comped rooms at another hotel nearby. Which it's like, of all the things that could have happened, y'all fucking lucky whoever owned that hotel. Because yeah. the other op option would have been much less pleasant. That could have gone a lot worse. Like just. But zombies aren't real. Thank you. <laughs> this is a comedy show. I don't know if anybody informed you. No, it's, it's just not Bill Nye. I, just, I, I, part of me is like, why are you helping them? Why didn't you just go to another hotel? But the other part is like, you know, no, you saw an opportunity for comedy and you, and you ran with it. I appreciate I that. I promise you half the comments on that TikTok because I'm on TikTok. Hmm. And TikTok has some of the angriest fucking Gen Zers on this planet. Yeah. I promise you half the comments on that TikTok are like, Booker, why are you helping the corporations? I, yeah, yeah, some of me is, part of me is like that, but part of me is also like, but it was funny though. Yeah, I mean, it, it does have a certain Wes Anderson charm. <sighs> uh, all right, we haven't had one of these. And they got a Hotel stay out of it. So cool. Okay. We haven't had one of these in a while. Um, you're going to be so angry. Um, someone is, someone is going to hell. This is, this is like straight, to, straight to hell. No, the, the, this, your room has been reserved in advance. This is like one of the worst things I've ever seen anyone do on the show ever. And you especially. That's a bold statement. You especially are going to be pissed. Poker player lied about having cancer and received thousands in donations to play in a World Series of Poker tournament. Really? California man has admitted to lying about having terminal cancer after receiving thousands of dollars in donations to play in a World Series of Poker tournament. Robert Mercer claimed to have terminal stage four colon cancer. Convinced people to. Well, at least he had the good sense to put it up his ass with his head. <laughs> um, convinced people to donate to his GoFundMe campaign to help pay to enter. The Las Vegas compensation, uh, competition. Now the 37-year-old uh, Vallejo resident tells the Las Vegas Review Journal it was all a lie. Quote, I did lie about having colon cancer. I don't have colon cancer, Mercer told David Schoen of the Las Vegas Review Journal. I used that to cover my situation. What I did was wrong. I shouldn't have told people I have colon cancer. Wow. You think? What is you know what really fucking frosts my cookies about this mm. it's the GoFundMe mm. to go to the world series of poker mm. when there are literally thousands of people putting up a GoFundMe to pay for treatment for their actual cancer yep like there are people that are like please donate to my GoFundMe so i don't die and this motherfucker is like Oh, I'm dying. Please donate to my GoFundMe so I could go play cards. 
The goal of the GoFundMe was to fulfill Mercer, uh, was to fulfill Mercer's dream, paying, playing in the uh, $10,000 buy-in No Limit Hold'em World Championship. Mercer had also received donations through private transactions, including a paid suite at the Bellagio Hotel during the tournament. In all, he received between $30,000 to $50,000 worth of donations. Oh, shit. That next paragraph. I he had no intention of paying anyone back because, quote, he believes that he was he has undiagnosed breast cancer and the donations were made because he was sick. No, the donations were made because you fucking lied. Yes. And if you have cancer now, that's a whole separate fucking thing. Th th this and is also you're going to find out real quick that you could have you probably were going to need that money. If you do have cancer, you're going to find out real quick that you didn't need to be in the World Series of Poker. You needed that money. And, and it gets it gets better, I guess, if you want to call this better. Um. The thing about GoFundMe is they are a business and they don't like being cheated, especially like this. Online fundraiser has been removed since Mercer's confession, uh, says Jeff Platt, a GoFundMe spokesperson. Quote, GoFundMe has zero tolerance for the misuse of our platform and takes swift action against those who, explicit, who exploit the generosity of our community. All donors have been fully refunded and Rob Mercer has been banned from using the platform. GoFundMe is also cooperating with law enforcement investigations. You see, this is what they call wire fraud. Mm -hmm. And um, you might think to yourself, wire fraud? Go look it up. This, this is wire fraud. And that's a federal felony. And that's the FBI. This mm -hmm. is... This is this is the Justice Department's like, oh, look at you. Aren't you adorable? Um, I don't know how he thought I do. What's blowing my guys by my mind is that this guy thought, eh, what's, uh, let me, I'll just tell him I didn't have it. It's fine. That's fine. It's fine. Because here's the other thing. You just didn't fucking think it through because, I mean, I'm assuming he didn't get very far, which mm -hmm. is also the motherfucker of the thing. Yeah. But whoever wins the World Series of Poker, you become a small level celebrity. Mm -hmm. And if you win the world's, if you were to win the World Series of Poker while dying of a terminal cancer, that would be a pretty big <sighs> fucking story. Yeah. So how are you going to play that out? How are you going to sustain that shit? Well, apparently, considering he just blurted it out, I'm going to say. He probably didn't win because his bluffing is for shit. Yeah. No, I don't have cancer. Boop a doo. Also, like, I might have people, cancer. And, like, this is not the first online cancer hoax I've seen. No. And now, like, having literally been inside that shit, mm. you've probably all noticed. Cancer changes your appearance rather drastically. Yes. And it's more than just the hair loss. Hmm. Like, I had the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man face for a while because of all the steroids. Like, yes. your eye eyebrows fall out. Like, you either gain or lose weight drastically. Like, it's not as easy to fake as people seem to think. Where, like, people think I'll just shave my head and people will think I have cancer. Uh, just put on some dark bags under your eyes and shave your head. It's, it's, it says, this is fine. It's fine. It's fine. You're right. This did make me really mad. I told you, fuck this guy. I'm going to try to keep track of this to find out how fucked he ends up. I hope it's very. I hope the answer there is very. I like wishing harm on people, but <clears throat> sir, I wish you a lifetime of public bathrooms with no paper towels and a hand dryer that doesn't work. Damn. Forever. Also, right. I hope that everybody sues you. Now let's go to a feel good story. Because th 
This next story is about someone who did something really shitty. I don't think there has been a fuck around and find out quite as gorgeous as this. Um, Vacuum filled with hundreds of hornets stolen from Philadelphia B truck. I don't have the link, but that sounds terrible. I think that's, uh, just, oh, I hit the enter button. There we go. Um, <laughs> Philadelphia may have a Darwin Award candidate who's either in a world of pain or about to be. Last Thursday night, a thief stole a vacuum from the back of a Ford pickup truck that belongs to Don Shump, owner of the Philadelphia Bee Company. Uh, the 11 time, 11 year old business specializes in relocating honeybees from their nests and removing various species of wasps from properties they're not wanted. The stolen vacuum contained hundreds of European hornets. Now, some of you who are either you're in the chat right now or you're on YouTube later, you can go and Google a European hornet. Hundreds of them. All of Philadelphia. What? Especially terrible. Oh, God. Do you, do you see the size of that damn thing? Oh, that's actually. Oh, that's that's okay, a yeah. European hornet. Yeah. Let's show that everybody at home. That's a European hornet. That's as big as like the first two segments of that one dude's finger. And they vacuum them up. Yeah. Um, all the Philadelphia P companies. removals. Safe? Yeah. They're chemical free. Shump and his crew use vacuums to suck up the insects before their nests are removed. Shump got a call last Thursday to remove a nest of European hornets from a property. Uh, the invasive species is a type of wasp that produces large queens this time of year. Uh, only a tiny percentage of them survive to hibernate, hibernate, create new nests. European hornets are especially feisty when threatened with a vacuum. They have a tendency to climb out of the hose. So even with the hose plugged up, they were trying to get out, Shump said. I just left the vacuum in the truck bed overnight, which I don't normally do people in my neighborhood don't bother my stuff they know i'm the beekeeper around uh shump's new work I'm truck sorry, you left a vacuum cleaner full of bees <laughs> in your truck <laughs> overnight shump. shump it gets better shump's new work truck which does not yet display the philadelphia bee company logo was parked near his friend's home in frankfurt when he woke up the next day, he saw the vacuum was missing, missing from his truck and posted an open letter to the thief on Facebook. Quote, to the poor soul who lifted the shop back out of the back of my truck, I wanted to give you a heads up. The vacuum was there because it's filled with European hornet queens, the largest social stinging insect in the eastern United States. Uh, I performed removal of their nest late yesterday afternoon. Those girls should be full of life and extra spicy. I anxiously await your unboxing video. <laughs> Dude is just bringing the sass. This feels like, you know, the guy who does the fake porch pirate right, packages right. full of glitter. Right. Yeah. This feels like if you, if that guy was jigsaw. <laughs> Like if 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 anyone ever deserved this shit, like and the, the guy's not particularly. He's like it was a hundred dollar shop back. It's no big deal. You about to learn your lesson about taking shit what don't belong to you. Yeah, you don't take things that aren't yours. They might be full of bees. Like say what you will about shoplifting, about you know all that's fine, fine. This wasn't no shoplifting. This was someone else, another person, their shit. You took their shit. This wasn't no corporation. This was one person. You deserve the beads. I mean, like, if you can't get people not to steal because of the morality of it, maybe this is how it needs to be. Like, maybe you have to be like, don't steal because what you steal might be full of beads. Okay. Next oh, one's from, okay. We are bouncing. We are bouncing around tonight a lot. So the next one's from Michigan. Folks. If you're squeamish, you might want to mute this one. 
I know, right? We reference this so much over the years. There's an old Jack Handy quote. And that is, if you lose your keys, if you drop your keys in lava, let them go. Because, man, they're gone. I miss Jack Handy. Well, this wasn't lava. And again, this is your last chance. I'm giving you room to bail. In three, two, one. Woman rescued from outhouse toilet after climbing in to retrieve Apple Watch. No. Bagley Township, Michigan. A woman was rescued Tuesday from an outhouse toilet in northern Michigan after she climbed in to retrieve her Apple Watch and became trapped. The woman, whose name was not released, lowered herself inside the toilet after dropping the watch at the Department of Natural Resources boat launch at Dixon Lake. Um, first responders were called. When the woman was heard yelling for help, the toilet was removed and a strap was used to haul the woman out. The state police did not say Wednesday if the woman was injured or if the watch was recovered. <laughs> Lord, Jimmy, what'd you eat? It's hollering. <laughs> Look, I know they're expensive. Holy God. But no. There is there are few things on this earth more disgusting than an outdoor toilet. Buddy, every time my hand hangs over the edge, you scratch it. Could we not? Thank you. That might as well. Do you remember years ago we did a story about a guy who did this at a yoga retreat just to like peep at the women as they peed on him. And I'm not sure which is the worst reason. This is like sexual predation or just Apple Watch. You ever seen uh, Event Horizon? No, I don't do eye stuff. Okay. I can't even watch the trailer to that movie. Like, this is, you give me the choice of shooting my ass through a wormhole and coming out the other end with some Cthulhu-esque horrors in my fucking brain or going down this hole, I'd be like, okay, so when do we launch? <laughs> I'll just, do I just sit in it? Do I have seatbelts? Okay, I'll wait. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking, how, I don't understand how someone's brain would go, well, guess I'm going to get it. I mean, leaving aside... Just how, just the pure grossness, uh-huh. okay? You better fucking pray. Why did someone put a gif of the eye thing in the chat? <laughs> when I just, what did I just say? Rude. Yes, they are. You better pray you don't have a single, even tiny open wound on your entire body, or welcome to the first day of the rest of your sepsis. Like, the diseases in there? Yeah. Have their own diseases. And it's not even new waste. Necessarily. It's, it's just a collection. It's it's got its own, it's got layers, it's got topography, it's got it's it's it's, the, it's the Golgothan shit demon, <laughs> is what it is. I just I, how did someone's brain think that was my my brain would be like, oh. Well, fuck. And that I, I that dropped wa- my iPhone in a flushed rest stop toilet once, mm-hmm. and I had to think about it. <laughs> like it was flushed, the water was clear, and I still had to stand there and think about how bad do I need this iPhone? Like, am I reaching in there to retrieve this iPhone? And I did, and I held it like this. And like washed my hands for five minutes straight. 
But like, I thought e- about it. I was even like, just reaching in there is like the pain box in Dune. You couldn't. I'd be like, yes, oh, no, mm. no, fuck you. Mm-hmm. And then this just week sucks, dude. I, I'm just I, I'm imagining all these rescue workers there going, she did what? She she. You signed up to be and a we've fireman. Said this, we've said this before. If you get it back, it's not going to work no, anymore. It's not going to work any. It's 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 over. It doesn't want it's to work anymore. It's marinated in shit. It's as th- that that if that iPhone if that iWatch even turns on, it longs for death. Yeah. Can you imagine like your fireman, you get trained to go and save people and shit, and they call you for this, and you're like, she did what? Oh man. Um, because yeah. this 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 is like paramedics fireman shit. That's what they call for this. Like I thought I was gonna be hauling people out of burning buildings and getting cats out of trees. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for poop covered ladies now you might be wondering what could be the worst thing this week i fucking am actually this mother fucker valkyrie what's going on i don't know if you can hear her just out in the hallway shouting oklahoma judge opened fire while driving and intentionally crashed his car an Oklahoma judge was arrested in Austin, Texas last week after authorities say he opened fire on parked vehicles while out driving, striking at least one of them, and intentionally crashed into a woman's vehicle. Brian Lowell, an associate district judge in Garfield County, Oklahoma, was arrested September 11th on a misdemeanor count of reckless driving. The only count of engaging in deadly conduct with a firearm was forwarded to a grand jury for consideration. Lowell's release on $10,000 bond ordered to undergo a mental health evaluation. Um, Lowell didn't immediately reply to a phone message left at a number listed. According to Austin police affidavit, officers were called just after 4 p.m. on September 11th by a witness who reported a man firing approximately five times while driving down the street. About 90 minutes later, police responded to a call about a crash less than two miles from the shooting scene where a woman said a man had deliberately collided into the rear of her vehicle twice. Level on the SUV matched the description of the shooter, told police he believed the woman had cut him off in traffic. Although he acknowledged their vehicles had collided, he, quote, did not admit the collisions were intentional. Level told police. There were two handguns in his vehicle, but he said, quote, he did not know why he would have shot his gun and could not recall any part of the shooting incident. Mm hmm. That's a lawyer. That's a fucking lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it gets worse. Paul Woodward, the presiding administrative judge for the uh, Garfield County District, said Lovell agreed not to preside over any cases until his own case was resolved. Quote. He's been a good friend and colleague for years. It's hard for me to believe any of this. Fuck you, dude. F- fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. This is, all right, when the cops are willing to arrest a judge. Yeah. You done And you know he was up. counting on them not. Yeah, he was like, come on, guys, come on. Every quote tells you he was counting on his status, getting him out of this. Like, no, I don't know any. She hit me. Right, right. I'm same team. Judge. Same she team. She hit me. Same team, guys. Same team. Right, right. Like, come you on. can smell the fucking entitlement coming off of this that he just thought he could say some shit and they'd be like, oh, okay. What in the entire fuck? I, I realize it's Texas and apparently shooting your gun is like waving hello. Yeah, that's just how they greet each other there, I think. But it's hey! Austin. Yeah, it is Austin. Austin's the weird town. So, you know. Yeah. And yeah, it's <sighs> this fucking guy. No matter how terrible of a person you are, someone will come out of the woodwork to defend you as long as you're a white dude. Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody gets that. 
and, and look, guess what? They didn't they didn't use his uh his mugshot in this picture, did they? No. Guess what they used? Interesting. They they used his county clerk court mugshots readily available. They could go and say, "Can we get the mugshot? Mm-hmm. We are the, we are the press." Mm-hmm. No, no. He gets this picture instead. He gets he gets that nice hi. Freaking Herman Munster. I'm going to piss some people off saying this. <clears throat> I'm going to piss some people off saying this. Okay. Piss them off. But Let's I go. can tell this guy's an asshole just by looking at the glasses he's wearing. It is 2023. Who's still wearing those glasses? And I know 50 people are going to be like, I am. What? They're out of style. They're like super you work- out of style. I'm like, what the fuck? Are- oh, yeah, you worked at the fucking the optometrist. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah. I'm here to tell you, I never <sighs> I never had a customer buy those glasses who wasn't a dick. I will. I so will. If you're going to defend it to me. If you're going to be like, I have those glasses. I just want you to know that that I worked at Lens Crafters for a year. It's a small sample. I understand. True. I never had to buy those glasses who wasn't a dick. You do have the work experience. I will give you that. Motherfucker. So yeah, this guy, he's, he's been charged with a misdemeanor. They're thinking about charging him with, with, with a felony. Maybe, you know. Just start popping shots at parked cars. Somebody could have been in one of them. You're a judge. And I'm telling you, he assumed he would get away with it because of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the fucking audacity to be like, no, no, she hit me. I, this is the kind of thing that will happen in your life. Somebody will do this shit. You just got to kind of roll with it. This. Or we could just let the orcas <clears throat> take over. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, once you get the orcas on land, they're a lot less effective. I just got to say. They've got limited utility. For now. For now, yeah. Well, what have we learned this week? We've learned that you get a lot of both. People give you a lot of leeway if you're a judge, even, even shooting randomly and ramming cars, kind of leeway. We have learned you would do better diving into a pit that leads to hell itself than trying to get your Apple Watch out of an open air outhouse. In the living fuck. I, I just, I'm trying to, how do you think it works down there? Is do, there a lost and found? <laughs> Does Mr. Hanky come out and say, "Hey, did you drop this?" <laughs> the fuck? Oh, what else this week? We've learned don't steal from people because you might end up covered in bees. <laughs> if only that poker guy. <laughs> I don't know how GoFundMe would send him bees, but if only. Yeah, we've also learned that um, there are, there are quick ways to go to hell. You found one. Mm-hmm. They they are they are prepared. For, also, probably jail too, because GoFundMe is wire fraud. Yeah. Oh, we have learned that if you find nobody working at a place, go ahead and take over because comedy may ensue. You, you can milk that or shit. Run, for... because zombies may ensue. <laughs> and finally, choose we... your own adventure. And finally, we learn you got to watch your goddamn kids because if you take their goddamn I- iPad, they're gonna steal your fucking car. <laughs> That's not a proportionate response, kids. I am a little impressed. If you're ten and watching this, one, you shouldn't be. But two, <clears throat> that's not a proportionate response. I am a little impressed, though. I'm a lot impressed and also scared. Yeah. 